What's going on everyone? Hanging out here at AL.com with Cole Kublik. You can catch him on the radio in the mornings on WJOX with uh, Greg McElroy, 7 to 10 a.m. Also, you can catch him on SEC Network every week covering the game of the week. He wears many hats, but today he's wearing the hat of Auburn's head-to-head -head analyst. Let's go. All right, so Auburn opens the season. They get a big win over Akron. And again, I know you can put a big asterisk beside it. They win 60 to 10 over Akron. But one thing that stood out to me, and obviously hearing from Coach Harson after this football game, is this team came in prepared, 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 prepared. From the outside looking in, you went back and watched film. I saw some of your notes on Twitter over the weekend after watching that game. What was your biggest takeaway about the overall sort of feel from this team, the personality, the emotion of this Auburn football team that we're going to see in 2021. I think you said it, Lauren, and I always try to give teams credit in this situation for handling their business. You see me say that on Sundays when I tweet out my takeaways. I, I don't ever have a problem with Auburn beating Akron by 45, 55, 60 points, whatever it is, because you handled it the way you were supposed to. How many times have we seen teams trip up? We've seen Auburn do it the last few years. I mean, overtime with Jacksonville State. Uh, there was a Southern Miss game that was tied a couple of years ago. So I respect teams that go handle their business the way that they were supposed to. And Auburn did that. It was a clean game. The effort was fantastic. The execution was solid. You don't get that result if those things did not take place. And this is a team that had a lot of reasons for that execution to not be there. Be it their coach, the defense coordinator being out for a week or so in fall camp new systems, new schemes, you got transfers coming in, transfers going out, distractions, the whole deal. And you come in and you handle things exactly the way that you were supposed to. So I credit Auburn, I credit Brian, staff, Brian Harson and that staff for getting the guys ready and managing things the way that they were supposed to. All right, so we dig even deeper into the offensive side of the football when you have Bo Nix that comes in. And one thing you said last week, on head to head was that Bo Nix needs to go out there and be a quarterback. Was he that? I believe he was. I was impressed with what I saw from Bo Nix. And first and foremost, staying in the pocket. Understanding that you have to be in the pocket to take advantage of route concepts, the route tree, and the way the passing game is going to develop. It can't be one and out, one, two and out. He took his time in the pocket. And there were a couple of throws, Lauren, that he steps up in the pocket and delivers a ball with a lot of velocity. Um, some wow throws, really and truly. Now, doesn't mean all those windows are going to be the same when you get to SEC competition, but you see the talent. And then Brian Harson, Mike Bobo, they take advantage of his mobility. You have some quarterback runs, a couple of play where he's able to use his athleticism and go do some different things that are going to make you more difficult to defend. So I thought he got pretty clean protection for most of the game, but the thing that I saw that I loved was just him in the pocket, operating as a quarterback, and being able to execute and be successful. All right, and then when you look at this offense as a whole, Mike Bobo, now the offensive coordinator, and we, we saw some production obviously on the ground. Tank Bisbee, uh, Jarquez, Jarquez Hunter, both over 100 yards on the ground. The running attack being very effective. 10.6 yards per, uh, per play on offense, 9.9 .9 in the rushing game, and then you, usage of the tight ends that that to me stood out as well how they're getting back to using their tight ends what did you see from this offense as a whole now under the new offensive coordinator in that regime balance first and foremost and you kind of brought it up with personnel when I say balance I think most people would say oh run past 50 50 mm -hmm. it's not really what I mean when I say balance it's nice to be balanced in that department from a play calling perspective but I also mean formations personnel that you're using are you motioning? What kind of plays are you calling and what options do you have to grow off of those plays? All of it looked bounced. It looked like an evenly distributed offense across the board in every facet. And that's gonna make you more difficult to defend and that's gonna allow you to add things that can be more difficult to defend down the road. The tight ends are gonna be big. If you ask Brian Harson before the season, he would tell you that we have to have that position. Don't know exactly who that guy is. Shanker gets most of the reps in the first game, 
there's going to be multiple tight ends that play, but it allows you to widen the surface of the defensive line and the defensive front. It obviously gives you extra blockers, pass protection, or in the run game. And it opens up different gaps because they're going to use that, that outside zone scheme, which is really going to allow Tank, Tank Bixby to make cuts in a lot of different directions. That thing can go outside the front side tackle or it can go all the way back behind the backside tackle. And so if you can widen that surface to help open those running lanes, it's only going to be more beneficial. And then obviously in the passing game, it gives you more intermediate threats, helps you find mismatches, does a lot of different things. So it, that's going to be there. And obviously this Auburn team goes up against Alabama State. I know we're not digging into their opponent so much in this one as to what we saw in week one because I think that's the bigger storyline here. The defense to me looked good. I think this defense is fast. I think they're physical. I think they've got all the key components. Um, Zacoby McLean looked really good to me. TD Moultrie had a heck of a game. Overall defensively, what stood out to you about their ability to um, you know, uh, get pressure on the quarterback, six sacks, that speaks volumes, but obviously to go up and make big plays and how is that going to pay dividends when they get down the road into SEC play? I'm not overly surprised by linebacker play. Popo, Wooten, McLean, we know what those guys are capable of. and I, I, There's no reason to believe that that production would drop off. I think even on the third level, even though Donovan Kaufman has been added, he'll be versatile, do different things. There are enough numbers for the back end of the Auburn defense to be successful. It's where you talked about up front, winning one-on-one -on -one pass rush situations, being able to dent the pocket and get penetration in the run game in the middle of that defensive line. That was my biggest concern, maybe of the entire team, outside of the quarterback taking a big step and making progressions was gonna be, who is going to help you in the middle of that defensive line? A couple guys moved around, did some different things, but I thought that that was a bright spot early on albeit not against the best offensive line Auburn's going to see, but you saw that they understand how to go out and make that happen. So I thought the defensive front was the highlight of the night for the Auburn defense because I expect the second and third level to look the way that they did. All right, prediction time. Obviously, I think this game going to be another blowout. Uh, you called it last week. I think you might have had them blanking them. Gave up 10 points. Not a big deal, right? Not a big deal. We'll just, you know, put that there. Um, I think that this Auburn team, again, we talked about at the beginning, preparedness. I think confidence is key for them. Being able to get, you know, sort of their feet underneath them in this first game. I think they can do much of the same. They're back at home. Of course, this will be an earlier kickoff on SEC Network against Alabama State. I have Auburn winning this one 52-3. to And, of course, I want to see, again, more of that confidence, being able to effectively move the football. Balance is key. As you said, if we can continue seeing balance on offense, that's going to be huge. And just being physical uh, for all four quarters. So 52-3 is my prediction. I'll take 55-7. A couple of skill guys on this Alabama State roster that I think could get behind the defense or make a guy miss and make a play. But I believe they will be overmatched at the line of scrimmage again. And if that offense runs in a similar fashion to they did last week, then I think you build upon that a little bit more. You have now some guys that are a little bit more comfortable being a part of that. Still waiting to see who the number one receiver is going to be. I think that may be sort of what I'm watching most in this game is, are we going to have separation to who is going to be the guy where Bo Nix has that confidence, not so much down the field on a second and three where you can play action and take your shot. Give me a third and five in a critical moment that you have to throw a slant. Or give me a third and four where you think you're going to have to throw a hitch or a crosser, and that's the guy you have the ultimate confidence in. I want to know who that guy is. But I still think Auburn handles their business again and gets a nice win this week.